Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain delta modulation with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. See, in this video, first of all, I'll discuss about basics of delta modulation. After that, I'll explain you waveforms of delta modulation. After that, I'll explain delta modulation transmitter and delta modulation receiver. After that, I'll explain waveforms of delta modulation at receiver side. And at last, I'll discuss about issues of delta modulation. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of delta modulation. See in this video lecture series, in my earlier videos, I have explained you PCM and differential PCM. In PCM, what we do is we perform sampling first. After sampling, we perform quantization and after quantization, we perform encoding. So in quantization process of PCM, we will be encoding each and every samples, right? So when you talk about PCM, then here in PCM, each and every sample is encoded according to its corresponding quantization level. That's why it requires more bits per sample. The reason is with full swing voltage, there are so many levels and based on number of levels per sample, there will be number of bits. If you have n number of bits, then total levels will be 2 to the power n. So in PCM, we will be encoding each and every samples. That's why we need more bits per sample. In differential PCM, what we do is we take difference in between two consecutive samples. Right. So in DPCM, difference between two consecutive samples is encoded according to corresponding quantization level. See, if you talk about one sample, then there will be more range of voltage. But if you talk about difference between two samples, then range of voltage that will decrease. If you have lower range of voltage, in that case, number of bits per sample will decrease. So with differential PCM, we need fewer bits per sample compared to PCM. But if you talk about delta modulation, then in delta modulation, we just need one bit per sample. So in delta modulation, we follow same process. First of all, we do sampling. After that, we perform quantization. And at last, we do encoding, right? Same process is there. But here, Per sample, you just need one bit. Let me explain that by waveforms first. So if you talk about waveforms, then here you can observe we have message signal by this color. And I'll explain you how we will be having approximated signal as per delta modulation. To understand this, you need to understand few basics. Let me explain that. See. If message signal is less than approximated signal, then size of approximated signal will reduce by step size delta for next TS duration. And as if message signal is more than approximated signal, then its amplitude will increase by step size delta for next TS duration. And here, one more thing that you need to understand. See, with delta modulation, we will be having one bit per sample. So output will be zero or one. Output will be one as if message signal is greater than approximated signal. And output will be zero as if message signal is less than approximated signal. Now, let me explain this by waveform that will give you more clarity. See, initially, approximated signal is zero. And here we have some value with message signal. So initially, message signal is greater than approximated signal. So here, digital value will be logic 1 as per this condition. If message signal is greater than approximated signal, then value should be logic 1. Now, here, see, we have approximated signal that is lower than message signal. So for next TS duration, amplitude will increase by step size delta. Now here we need to consider comparison for next TS duration. 
So here, approximated signal is having higher value compared to message signal. Means here we will be having logic zero as per this condition, approximated signal is higher than message signal means here we have logic zero. And as message signal is lower compared to approximated signal, means here for next year's duration, its amplitude should decrease by delta. Now at 2TS instant, if you compare message signal and approximated signal, then message signal is higher. So here, there will be logic one and approximated signal that will follow message signal. So here, there will be increase in amplitude by delta. Now at this instant also, message signal is greater compared to approximated signal. So here there will be logic one and here there will be increase in step size delta. At this instant, message signal is greater compared to approximated signal. So here again there will be logic one and amplitude of approximated signal will increase by step size delta. At this instant, at 5TS instant, message signal is greater compared to approximated signal. So again there will be logic one and amplitude of approximated signal that will increase by step size delta. At this instant also, message signal is greater compared to approximated signal. So again there will be logic one at output side and approximated signal will increase by step size delta. Now at this instant, at 70s instant, here approximated signal is greater compared to message signal. So here at output side there will be logic 0 and approximated signal that will follow message signal means now here approximated signal that should decrease by delta step size. So that is how delta modulation is getting performed and digitally we will be having ones and zeros. Here we have advantage of one bit per sample. You just need one bit per sample, right? Now, let me explain how it is getting generated. So this transmitter circuit that is similar to differential PCM, which we have already seen it in my earlier video. See here we have analog input. First of all, it is given to sampler. So here we have sampled signal, right? This sampled signal that is given to this adder where here we will be having error signal that is a difference in between X of NTS and X cap of NTS. See previously with differential PCM here we were been using prediction filter. But now with delta modulation only one difference is there. Now you need to use delay of TS. So here we will be having error signal and this error signal that is given to one bit quantizer. See as if this error signal is positive at a time this one bit quantizer that will generate plus delta output which is B of NTS and as if this error signal is negative in that case this one bit quantizer that will generate minus delta output over here. And this plus delta and minus delta that is getting cumulatively added by this circuit. You see how. Let us consider plus delta is coming here. Initially, this is zero. So zero is coming in feedback. So addition is plus delta over here. Now in next TS duration, again, if it is plus delta over here, then delta plus delta that will be making two delta over here, right? So cumulative addition is happening by this circuit, right? And based on plus delta and minus delta, this encoder will generate digital output. If it is plus delta, then over here we will be having logic one. And if it is minus delta, then here we will be having logic zero. That is how simple circuit is there, right? So same circuit is there as it is there with differential PCM. Only difference is here we are using one bit quantizer and instead of prediction filter, here we are using delay of TS duration, right? So here input to one bit quantizer, that is E of NTS. That is a difference in between sampled signal and 
this delayed signal x cap of nts right see output of one bit quantizer that will be plus or minus delta it will be plus delta as if error is positive and it will be minus delta as if error is negative right input to delay ts that will be changed by plus or minus delta that will be changed by plus or minus delta as per output of one bit quantizer right and at last over here we will be having digital output and that will be as per one bit per sample over here right now let me discuss about delta modulation receiver see delta modulation receiver that is also having same circuit as it is there with differential pcm first of all digital input is given to decoder so over here decoder will generate plus or minus delta as if logic 0 is there then it will generate minus delta as if logic 1 is there then it will generate plus delta here in feedback with delay of ts we will be having feedback signal that is getting added over here and it is generating sampled signal over here if you pass it through low pass filter then again you will be having analog signal right so here decoder will generate plus or minus delta for logic 1 here there will be plus delta and for logic 0 here we will be having minus delta here x of nts that is addition of decoder output and this feedback signal right now let me explain how we have waveforms at receiver side so we receive digital input so that will be logic 1 and logic 0 sequence right and here we have a sequence with the spacing of ts duration right so sampling frequency is fs first of all let me explain decoder output see decoder output that will be plus delta in case of logic 1 and it will be minus delta in case of logic 0 right so you can observe for logic 1 we have plus delta for logic 0 we have minus delta that is how decoder output is there now first of all i'll plot input to low pass filter so initially signal will be 0 now we have plus delta so here we will be having plus delta then we have minus delta so add this with this so it will become 0 now we have plus delta so add it over here so we have plus delta again we have plus delta so add it over here so it will be 2 delta now again we have plus delta so it will be 3 delta again we have plus delta so it will be 4 delta again we have plus delta so it will be 5 delta then we have minus delta so here we will be having minus delta with this right so that is how input to low pass filter that is cumulatively added right now if you pass this signal through low pass filter then it will follow envelope you can observe it will follow envelope like this right so that is what actually our message signal right now let me explain issues of delta modulation see first issue is quantization error i have explained you this process right like how we have message signal and approximated signal so difference in between message signal and approximated signal that is quantization error you can observe here we have quantization error that is a difference in between message signal and approximated signal right now if you want to reduce this quantization error then what you can do so here we need to observe step size if you increase step size then quantization error will increase for slower signals and if you decrease step size then quantization error that will increase for faster signals and another solution is there that is to increase sampling rate if you increase sampling rate over here in that case we will be increasing bit rate of modulation right so first of all you need to understand slow overload distortion that happens as and when we have fast input you can observe here we have fast input right and approximated signal that will be as per difference in between message signal and current value of approximated signal so initially it is zero so plus delta 
here we have message signal that is higher than this so again plus delta this is higher than this so again plus delta this is again higher than this so again plus delta this is higher than this so again plus delta now this is lower than message so minus delta again minus delta again minus delta right so if you observe here we have fast input so here this quantization error that is even increasing this area is more what it means here we have higher quantization error right over here also we have higher quantization error why the reason is input is fast so what is the solution solution is to increase step size or increase sampling rate right now let me discuss about one more issue that is regarding slower input that is referred as granular noise so if your input is slower then what will happen see here input is changing by minimal amplitude right so initially this message is greater compared to approximated signal so here plus delta again there will be plus delta now you see here minus delta plus delta minus delta plus delta that is how change in approximated signal that is there with us so here there is quantization error due to step size right so if you want to minimize this quantization error over here then here solution is to have decrease in step size or one should use adaptive delta modulation right so adaptive delta modulation that I'll explain in my future coming videos with this video lecture series. See in this video, I have not discussed about mathematics of delta modulation that even I'll cover in my next coming videos. Here my goal was to explain you fundamentals of delta modulation. I think now you are having fair enough idea about what are the fundamentals which is there with delta modulation. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.